name. Amen. 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 Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for praying. Um, I'll just, you know, looking at Second Timothy chapter two verse fifteen, and just kind of tied into that. I want us to right. It says, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. Again, I'm emphasizing the word, it says, do your best. It is not a given, right? That you'll, you'll be approved, you'll be presenting yourself approved to God. But God is saying, do your best, do your own part. It's not saying that you everything will be in your power, right? We have the Holy Spirit to enable us to empower us. But the Holy Spirit will not force us. Because irrespective of the work of the Holy Spirit, we still have free agency, right? The Holy Spirit will only follow us and create, empower, that which will allow our agency to do. The Holy Spirit will not work against our agency. The Bible says that it is in that works in us both to will and to do. Both to will and to do. You will encourage your will, but will not enforce your will. It will never go against your will. Yes, it works not in terms of that is empowering our will as it were right but it will never cross the bound of making us do something we don't want to do because if never done that then it's not in a just God the justice restricts him from forcing us to do anything because the basis of judgment is, is the fact that we have free agency once you take away free agency there's no judgment because then you are not responsible or you are condemned. And that's what 666 will do. When we get that mark 666, we will not be able to, it will take away our free agency. Therefore, we are condemned to whatever tragedy we are on at that point in time. And obviously, if you are we are already in the path of sin. We can never repent. Because for each way to repent, you must have agency, you must have the ability to choose to. But once you lose your ability to choose to, you cannot repent, right? God will never do free against it. It's taken away by the devil when the sickness is affected and God allows, he that let allows, right? There will be sicknesses. What sicknesses will do for you is it will take away your agency. Because once your agency is taken away, you cannot repent again. So the Bible says you are forever condemned at that point in time. But until then, we all have free agency, meaning we can make decisions. But as long as we are making decisions, we can change and get better. Right? God will never go against your agency. Anything that goes against your agency is called witchcraft. It's called manipulation. Right? And unfortunately, we have that on some of our books today. They think they are doing the work of God manipulating people. But that they are doing the work of the devil, right? God will never manipulate you. God will never deceive you to do something against your will. He will always go to your will. So he says, come and let us reason together, right? Come and let us reason together. What he's saying is, come, I want to engage your consciousness. I want to engage your consciousness because the and that decision has to be your own. That's the only way you can get to heaven or to hell. Right? Because your agency has to bear its mark. Right? So God will never do anything against your agency. He will never manipulate you. So any altar where you find people manipulating you, telling you about oh, trying to work on your emotional suffering, they are not of God. They are the devil. At that point in time, they are serving the devil, not God. The offering that you give, God will not bless it. Because that's not the way God is offering. He says that his own offering must be a living sacrifice. Meaning that it's one that you decide to give. Not because someone deceived you that you don't give, you will get punishment. Don't give, you will not uh, be pro uh, prosper. If you don't give, uh, your, your salary will not be sweet. So the devil, those people are liars. They are working for the devil, not of God. God would never take your agency. It has to be your decision. That's what it means. It, 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 it requires that you really do, not one that you can keep doing. Right? And, and that's what, what Second Timothy 15 is was is saying. Because we have to present ourselves, right, to God. One that is approved, a worker that doesn't need to be ashamed. 
correctly. Another version of the I think will say rightly handling or despairing the word of God. Right? And we're going to stop. I'm just going to read the verse and I go to it up next week. That part of scripture, and I'm going to have this and it will, will, will connection later on. But let me read First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. It says, Now about your love for one another, we do not need to write to you, for you yourself have been by God to love each other. And in fact, you do love all of God's family throughout Macedonia. Yet, yet, the real scripture chart we're going to discuss this week is verse 11 and 12. This is the introduction to it. It says, Yet, we heard you, brothers and sisters, to do more and more. Same thing in Hebrews 6 is talking about. Let's go to higher things. Let's stop staying at this low level. Let's go to higher things. Let's do more and more. So it starts from verse 11. It says, and to make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. Make it your ambition to live a quiet life. We'll talk about what life is. Yeah? You should mind your own business and work with your head, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders, so that you will not be dependent on anybody. We'll stop there. Help us. Something for you to meditate on the weekend, and we'll talk more about it next week. God helping us. Uh, any, anyone wants to add? Okay, you don't have anything to that. Pastor, share anything you want to add to that? Pastor, share Praise anything. God. Yeah, Praise go ahead. God. Yes. Mine is more of testimony. First, living Jesus. Hallelujah. I have one of my colleagues who was really one of our close associates. Even though she doesn't join, but anytime I walk, she used to join with me. And I think I mentioned it to your hearing that time that somebody is requesting to join us. She did was joining. And as at that time, she happened to be a waiting mother, a waiting yeah. woman. She and her husband waited enough. And uh, as at that time, she she's close to her 55. To the glory of God, the Lord has blessed the family with a bouncing baby girl. So Amen. it can only be God. I know she was Amen. waiting for something special with the Lord. And then every day she used to join. In fact, she would be the one to remind me that, sister, ah, don't forget. To have me day. To have me day. To have me day. I can tell you she is a nursing mother now. I don't think she will me. So you give Amen. it back to God. Say thank you, Jesus. He answers prayers. He's brought he joy, does. more joy into the family. And I believe the Lord Amen. who has done this will give them reason to continue to follow him in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, ma. Thank you, ma. We're, we're glad is her heart because that's what God does. God is life. And that life, Jesus is us in our life. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for letting us. Uh, our greetings to her. Many more blessings in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Pastor, anything before I close? All right, Pastor. All right. So, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Have a great weekend. My God's grace will continue on Monday. God help you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Tá